Okay, <clears throat> just continuing with the BMAT physics questions uh, up to question 16 now um, where we've got to compare what's going on when a switch is opened and a switch is closed. So, different approaches to this. Obviously you don't have to follow my approach. Um, I suppose I'm going to show you an approach that's consistent with the last approach I used before. But obviously if you can just do, do this intuitively then, then that's uh, great. Um, the thing you've got to spot here is that you've got short circuits going on. Uh, that's the situation. So what we've got here, when switch Q is closed, <coughs> is a route that goes around this, this whole chunk of the circuit here. It looks complicated. Okay, but there's a route that essentially goes all, all the way around that just through a wire and implicitly when I showed you how to, to solve that other circuits question implicitly we say that, there, that there's no voltage lost going through the wires because the wires have such low resistance we say that there's no voltage lost going through the wires okay so <coughs> if this route um, is just through a wire then in going from this point here to this point here which is part of the way around a loop if, if you remember the loops I was talking about before that's part way around a loop the voltage between that point and that point is zero volts because it's just going through a wire now it turns out uh, the voltage the potential difference between two points is the same irrespective of any route you go around okay so now if I went through these it's also zero and if I went through these it's also zero okay so the voltage between those two red dots <coughs> is zero what does that mean uh, well it means none of the bulbs are going to light up uh, and bulb Y therefore is going to get all 12 volts because remember what I said before if we start over here gain 12 volts we've got to lose 12 volts going around the rest of the circuit back to that point well we, can, we can't lose any volts across this complicated bit here because it's a short circuit so all the 12 volts has got to be lost across this so as far as I'm concerned bulb Y is going to be bright it's getting all the 12 volts all the rest are going to be off <coughs> now as far as I remember we've got to close this switch and open this switch okay this means uh, we've no longer got a short circuit across that whole bit we've just got a short circuit here now okay so the voltage across this particular bit is going to be zero just across this bit here between these two two dots is going to be zero okay now got to use your brain okay do the thing that I did before maybe start over here got gain 12 volts now we've got two routes we can either go this way and lose our 12 volts which are going to be lost across this one and this one because um, there's no voltage lost across the one that's shorted out or you can also do another closed loop whoops here we go that goes through these ones apologies for the outrageous noise in the background okay now should be pretty clear that I've already said that the voltage between two points any two points has to be the same so if I choose this black point and this black point the voltage between those <coughs> has to be the same now that means whatever voltage is, is dropped across this one okay who knows what it is at the moment uh, you know X volts that must be the same across this the, the, the red branch so that must be X over 2 volts and that must be X over 2 volts okay so they're going to be dimmer than 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 uh, bulb X <coughs> and bulb Y because some of the voltage is now being lost across all this this is going to have a, a voltage across it of less than 12 volts so bulb Y is going to get dimmer I can't remember what the question was even asking about um, but hopefully I've told you enough to work out the answers what we've we got to know oh we only need to know about bulb X and bulb Y so we don't even need really care about these two bulbs below so all that stuff about um, the two volts below you don't even have to worry about too much okay so you just need to consider bulb X and bulb Y so just think about the short circuits if it's a short circuit 
the voltage across that is zero so anything any bulbs enclosed by a short circuit will not light okay so if there's a short circuit around any bulb that bulb won't light right uh, two resistors are connected in series um, blah 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 well this is easy now because now we've talked about this a whole load okay so <coughs> don't be put off by the weird way they've drawn it they've drawn this in a way that you won't have seen okay but this is actually a really common way of drawing circuits okay to have like a big line along the bottom which is zero volts and a big line across the top which is six volts what does that mean okay how would this how, how would you make this in a in a normal circuit diagram that you are familiar with well what do you need in order to create a potential difference you need some cells so the thing they haven't drawn is whatever is producing that potential difference I've drawn it in now for you now we know that there's two resistors in series like this and one of them I believe had four volts across it yep so there's four volts across the top one here what's the voltage across the other one well <coughs> if you take a this, the voltage across the cells must be 6 volts so we go through the cells, get 6 volts go through that, lose 4 volts what have you got to lose through that? then you know your answer so sometimes they'll draw the circuits in this way which you won't be familiar with but it is actually very common and they've just skipped out the power supply because they don't care wh whether it's p a power supply or cells or whatever um, so we need to get familiar with that right um, this one's pretty important because it's got actual applications to, to medicine um, and it's pretty much a standard heat transfer question um, that is good for you to understand so have a go at that see how you get on uh, let me know if you have any problems but I don't think there's a lot I need to say this one here I don't want to say too much okay because you can just look by looking at the answers okay you can look at what the potential mistakes are okay so you've got to think what is amplitude and by looking at those different answers hopefully it should jog your memory as to what amplitude is and is not likewise frequency in Hertz what are all these crazy numbers here with 24s and 3600s well obviously you've got to do a unit conversion of some sort because frequency is in somethings per second and they've given you time in hours so it's a unit conversion so I don't want to say too much so I'm going to just give the answers away um, so just look at the answers and, and you can work out from the answers what you've got to do the question is which is the correct what is amplitude and which is the correct unit conversion right uh, next one question 20 you just got to be on you know on the ball all right it's kilo ohms it's not ohms it's kilo ohms 1.5 kilo ohms that means 1.5 thousand ohms so just really be if your question looks ridiculously easy like this okay then it might not be ridiculously easy check for anything hidden like the killer because it does say give your answer in amperes as well so make sure you give it in amps don't give it in killer amps um, although I can't see how they could really complain about that but they might right next one um, we do this question I set this question all the time in you know year eight so hopefully you should be able to handle that blah 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 blah, blah. okay standard terminal velocity question which you know it's good to good to fully understand that go through that make sure you're happy with it but I don't need to say too much bullet blah 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 okay so <coughs> this is a tricky situation for you possibly um, if you can't remember how to solve it obviously then it's tricky okay it's also tricky because they've given you something in in grams rather than in kilograms so what you've got to remember from GCSE here is that force is change in momentum divided by time okay so force is change in momentum divided by time and momentum is mass times velocity but you've got to get it all in the right units okay so mass in kilograms for example for this one so if you can do that then um, you know the momentum before it hits the jacket you know the momentum after you can work out the change in momentum uh, and you know the time the other way you can do it which is totally equivalent is to also do F equals MA it, the maths just works out to be identical if you do F equals MA 
obviously you know the mass, you can work out the acceleration by doing the change in velocity divided by time. Those two approaches are mathematically identical, so it doesn't matter which one you do. Next one, when a one kilogram mass is dropped, blah, 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 blah. Uh, okay, so uh, this one is tricky. You could approach it in different ways, okay. Uh, probably maybe an intuitive way to approach it would be to, to approach it from an energy point of view. Clearly, I mean I would say, clearly it's going to be going slower, okay. So, uh, but they're all slower, <laughs> so we need to work out uh, which slower it is. Um, what's going on here, if we analyse it in terms of energy, is we've got a transfer of gravitational energy, m g h and that's all being transferred to kinetic energy okay now it's asking about change in g and changing v okay so this is quite tricky now <coughs> if we rearrange and make v the subject let's say what would that do for us? Well, we can get rid of the m's because there's an m on both sides. So we can divide both sides by m. If we make v squared the subject, we're going to get 2gh. Okay? And we want to know what happens to v. So v is going to be root 2gh. So the question, and this is tricky, <coughs> uh, but the question you've got to ask yourself is if I do something to the H in here, okay, what's it going to do to the thing out here? So if I quarter that thing in there, what's it going to do to my V out here? Okay, so if we times the H by a quarter, what's it going to do to that? Have a think about it, see if you can work it out, because obviously, you know, you need to be able to, to, to do this kind of like reasoning with, with, with proportionality like this and it's not always going to be directly proportional could be proportional to the square or the square root or whatever so have a think about that <coughs> and if you're still struggling come and ask me about it good, whoops, wrong thing, here we go right, we're nearly there now okay um, <coughs> this, I think you can just apply my trick, yeah go around it with your finger, they're all identical okay so the voltage across wires is zero no voltage is lost through wires also no voltage is lost through ammeters because they're designed to have very low resistance so we'll assume no voltage is lost going through them so we're only going to be losing voltage through our bulbs so use that trick work it out hopefully you should be fine um, this should be fine okay you've just got to combine together a couple of concepts about power being rate of energy transfer and um, either gravitational potential energy change or work done. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this is just a standard transformer question. Remember that the thickness of wire to a first approximation has nothing to do with uh, the voltage. Um, it's, it's just purely to do with the ratio of the turns on the primary and the secondary. Turns out it would start having a bit of an effect or your wires might just melt if you choose the wrong thickness but to a first approximation it's just the number of turns that matters. So you've got to work out what the number of turns is there. This looks like a maths question number 28. Ask your maths teacher <laughs> if you can't do it or, or come and ask me and I will work it out with you. That's fine. Um, what have we got going on here? This is just another really simple circuit that they've just drawn in a way that's trying to make it look hard. Okay, so if you don't like it, just get your pen and draw on the power supply. Okay, just draw on like some batteries here or whatever to make you feel happier. Then it's dead simple. Okay, it's just a series circuit. Only thing you've got to remember is it's kilo ohms, not ohms. All right. So if they draw you circuits like that, don't panic. It's just it's just a different way of drawing them. Right, the earth wire, what should you connect it to? Find out, if you don't know. Uh, blah, 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 blah. What is the power of the pump? And what speed does the water leave the nozzle? This looks hard. Okay, so. Yeah, okay. 
So this one looks tricky, okay? And there's 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 a lot of different answers, eight different answers. So <coughs> you're going to need a way to work out what speed the water needs to be going at, and then what the power of the pump is. Um, I think this one's probably quite hard. I think you'd probably want to approach it from potentially again a conservation of energy uh, viewpoint. Okay, uh, so think about it's the opposite of what was going on before um, with the thing being dropped. Now it's got kinetic energy, so the water's being shot upwards with V. Okay, and when it gets to its highest point, um, V is now zero so all of its kinetic energy has been transferred into gravitational potential energy okay so half m v squared is going to equal m g h okay that should allow you since you know uh, the m's cancel since you know g and since you know h because i think it tells you what it is you should be able to work out v the speed at which the water leaves the thing okay then um, if you want to know the power of the pump I guess you've got to think how much kinetic energy does it need to give the water in one second okay because power is energy per second energy transfer per second Okay, so we're imagining, I'm imagining that it's taking water that's got no kinetic energy and the job of the pump is to give it kinetic energy. The question is how much kinetic energy is, is it giving the water in one second? So you know the formula for kinetic energy, you know V because you've just worked it out. I guess you've got to work out M, how much water does it do this to in a second? Okay, so how much water does it have to speed up and, and give kinetic energy to every second? That's probably what I would do. Okay, this one looks hard. There's probably a number of ways of solving this one as well. Obviously, you could solve it with SUVAT if you know SUVAT, but if you haven't done maths A-level, you don't know SUVAT. So um, different approaches for that. See how you get on with it. Oh, look, and it tells you to take G to be 10 as well, which is why it gives you these nice answers. Okay, lovely. Let's keep moving. What happened there? Went the wrong way. Blah 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 Oh this just looks like a bit of a so it's you know it's quite simple. It's just M you know um gonna be MGH for the change in kinetic energy. Um excuse me. MGH for the change in gravitational potential energy, but also it's doing work against friction, which is force times distance moved in the direction of the force. And the key thing here is that the, the, the height it moves through, which tells you the work done against gravity, and the distance it moves pushing against friction are different. So I would draw a triangle here, okay, clearly annotated triangle, so that you know um, you know what is going on with your height gained and with your distance moved against friction because they're different and then I guess you've got to add it together so that's another tricky one uh, this looks easy electromagnetic spectrum you just need to know it uh, right the first graph shows the variation of the displacement along a wave at a particular instant in time the second graph shows the variation with time blah blah blah, blah. What is the speed of this uh, wave? Okay, so this is a question that's not that hard, except you've never been asked it before. Okay, so the question is you've got to know what's different about a displacement <coughs> against distance graph and what's different uh, uh, with, with the time graph. Well, let me just give you a hint. Okay, if I were to label that, if this is a graph of distance, then that is some distance measured in meters. What do we call that? We call that something. Okay. If this is a graph of displacement against time, that is some amount of time. What do we call that amount of time? Think about that. Then if you know what that distance is and what that amount of time is, you should be able to work out the speed uh, relatively easily. Um, so it's just a question of knowing what you can get from, from, from these two graphs. Right. Moving on, we're getting near the end here. Done. Okay. 
blah -dee, blah -dee, blah how will the readings on the meters be affected as the resistance of the variable resistor is increased okay this one's pretty straightforward now because we've got our magic trick okay we know what happens to voltage the voltage um, when we go around the circuit and we know how the voltage is shared when the resistances of two resistors in series are not equal so the resistance um, if we call this one like R1 and this one R2 they're not necessarily going to be equal and if we keep increasing what does it say here yeah if we increase the value of R2 think about what I said before okay which gets a greater share of the voltage the one with the greater resistance or the one with less resistance think about that that's enough to solve that in terms of the current I mean all that depends on is the total resistance in the circuit so as you increase R2 what happens to the total resistance in the circuit therefore what's going to happen to the current I think I may have said enough there slash possibly too much um, oh we've got to the end amazing good okay so that was a quick run through just to give you some tips I hope they weren't too didn't, didn't help you too much because really you, you, got, you want to be kind of working these things out for yourself once you get the answers check through the answers um, and if you still can't work some of them out come and see me um, we've got a, a, a date sorted out for that and we'll go through it good luck I uh, hope it goes well and uh, I might see you next week